Hey Aries, welcome to your tarot session. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're gonna dive right into your reading. Make sure to like, subscribe, join the family so you don't miss out on your weekly sessions. Okay. Aries, this is the general energy. Aries. Oh yes. Oh yes. This feels this feels good. Seven of Pentacles, Empress, Queen of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Okay, my friend. I think you've been expecting something to change. You've been expecting something to shift, and it will happen. I think it's gonna be radical. Uh, when I see the Empress, I always think about radical self-love, radical acceptance. And the fact that the Queen of Pentacles was at the bottom of the deck, it just confirms it even more. <laughs> Seven of Pentacles to me is when we're learning to break up with our need for credit and validation, we are learning to flow with our own sacred rhythm. And something I talked a lot about on the channel, how... I really believe that we all have our own unique sacred rhythm and the seven of pentacles remind me how we are connected to nature and there's something about your own personal season. So you've been in or you've been preparing for a harvesting season, clearly. There's something here again that feels very radical, a complete shift. I think that all themes of pleasure, all themes of earth. So I'm talking body, material, all senses really activated. It could be your money, your relationship with your body, how you look, how you feel like you want to shine. Um, it's, I'm hearing the people who shine from within don't need the stage. They don't need the spotlight because they shine from within. And I think this is what's happening to you. Again, when I saw the seven of pentacles, there was this letting go, breaking up of the need to please other people. You are stepping away from what was expected of you. And again, that's how the Empress to me is so radical in her way of loving herself accepting where she is and there's always this stream of water in the back of the empress she is highly vulnerable she understands the value of her own emotionality of her sensitivity and i feel like aries you have this sensitivity of course you are the first sign of the zodiac like the energy of aries is as i always say the symbol of new life, a baby radically taking up space, screaming, I am here. I am not afraid to take up space. And that's why you are the emperor in the tarot. So listen, there's a lot coming up. Um, let's see what this is about, Aries. And just for your information, I'm recording this session on August 7th. Tomorrow is the 888 portal. Uh, I love it. You know how, how I love angel numbers, how I love eight infinity loop energy. To me, it's, it's clear that it's going to be a massive day of expansion for everyone. So I'm interested to see like how this is going to take place for you here. Oh, and we're starting the reading with the biggest infinity loop symbol in the tarot. So it makes sense. Two of pentacles is when we align our values with what we want. I know I can have it all. I know that whatever I put my mind into, I can create as long as it's aligned with my values. And there's something here that is ready to expand. Again, radical change really is, I believe, the theme of this reading of this week for you. Expect it. Open yourself to it. Uh, magician is here. We have another infinity loop. Uh, listen, there's something very magical happening today with the readings. I just recorded this Virgo session. And 
it felt so magical and I think that the magic is kind of bleeding in your reading and I love it. So magician, okay, we understand the tools, we can see, we can appreciate the tools that we accumulated throughout our lives. And I'm talking about physical tools, emotional tools, mental tools. It's all here. Everything is on the table of the magician, plus an infinity loop, plus a wand in his hand. So you have it all. You are ready to embrace change because this is where you are at in your journey. You're ready for a complete transformation. And with the five of swords here, I think that you're still healing something, healing maybe a separation, something that happened in the past between you and someone else. It's a contraction. It feels uncomfortable whenever you dream about it or think about it, but you are moving through it. And I think that you are aware of that. There's something here in the past, I would say kind of recent past, where you have this moment of doubt. How am I going to get through this? How am I going to trust again after being hurt in that way? Why would I even want to trust? Why would I even want to welcome new people into my life? I'd rather focus on myself, focus on my immediate family, my loved ones. Uh, I'm hearing for some of you, you're fur babies, and that's totally valid. You know, sometimes um, pets <laughs> are way more fun to have around than certain humans. And I think... A lot of us understand that. So I just want to make space, hold space for all of y'all, for babies. Um, something new begins this week. I would say on the 888, August 8 could be a very important day because something that happened within is now ready to shine through, is now materializing into the world. So the transformation has been happening for you, you know, for a very long time. Years and years of work, of staying on this path of acceptance, finding acceptance on the road to success. And I think this is exactly what's happening here. You're getting to a level of success that is different you receive it differently you appreciate it differently and that's what the empress is all about she is the card of receiving we have listen cards are just gonna come out the death card the deepest transformation in the tarot there's something about your values here because we have to notice here the hierophant facing the chariot of debt facing this energy your values at one point completely went through a transformation. Again, I think it happened after you being hurt by someone. There could have been a long-term commitment that just didn't work. And your nervous system, kind of your ego was saying, this is a failure, Aries. You failed. But your heart knows better. Your soul knows better. Whoever hurt you in the past and whatever, again, felt like a failure, quote unquote, a failure, it was a lesson. And I think that we all know this. It's not like I'm teaching you something amazing in this moment. We all know that challenges, heartbreaks eventually becomes lesson. But to know it and understand it is very different. And when I see infinity loops, when I see the Empress... I know that someone understands something. What your heart and your soul knew all along, now your brain gets it. That's wisdom, baby. It's not just you knowing, you understand. We have the Eight of Pentacles and the Seven of Wands. Eight of Pentacles is at the heart of this reading. So we go from the Seven, general energy, to letting go of the grip, letting go of kind of freeing ourselves from the waiting trap. Waiting on something to prove to us that we did not fail, that we're going to be okay. 
you broke up with that need, that credit, that validation that the ego seeks. And now at the heart of it all, there's another eight, another infinity loop. Because all eights in the tarot are directly connected to the infinity symbol. The Eight of Pentacles, I feel for you, is showing up as a confirmation that you've been growing through your work. Whatever you do on your nine to five, however you are of service, you maybe got lost there for a second. I don't know if Aries is known to be kind of a workaholic. The Aries I know definitely, I would say, they have transformed through their work and it makes a lot of sense here with the eight of pentacles but at the heart of it all it feels like i have to say your job your purpose your work it saved you it kept your mind busy it kept you in that space of humble service even if at the end of the day a lot of us you know we go to work because we have to pay our bills but there is something here that you're about to tap into, something that you would do even if you weren't paid to do it. There's passion. Seven of Wands. This is connected to Leo, and we are in Leo season. Leo is fixed fire. It's the light that never goes out. And you are an Aries. This is an energy that benefits you so freaking much. It adds to your fire. It brings you back to this space of, let me try something new. Let me try this just for the fun. Let me create something just for the sake of creativity. Let me just do my thing and see how it turns out. Let me have fun. And again, there is something here that I feel could be linked to your work, could be linked to your nine to five, that is like an addition of some sort. I don't, I don't know what it means, but this is what I'm getting right now. There's an addition of some sort that you realize you would do even if you weren't paid to do it. That to me is a freaking gift. That to me is true success. Success goes way beyond the material. It goes way beyond the cash. But at the end of the day, we have to pay our bills. We have to make ends meet. You know, we are all trapped in this... Uh, you know, in this loop. Um, but there's something here that finds you and it it sparks your passion. It brings you back into this state of creativity and fun and excitement. It connects you to other human also. I need to know more about this. You have something rare. Yeah, yeah, Queen of Cups. Aries, you have something rare. And it's weird because the Queen of Cups showed up as I was, you know, starting to say something. You are not known or celebrated to be the most intuitive sign of the Zodiac. Because you are a fire sign. You are the first sign of the Zodiac. A lot of people say that Pisces is, <clears throat> water signs are very intuitive, but... Fire is connected to intuition. You are the spark of life. You are the symbol of new life. New ideas, new feelings, new everything. This is something that you have the potential to create constantly. And the thing that I notice is that you being ruled by Mars, a lot of the times when newness is ready to show up in your life, you feel like you have to lose everything before you get there. There's always the sense of something is being torn apart. All the non-essential is being cleared out of your life. And it can feel very scary at first, but it is always for your greater good. And I think this is one of the lessons that Aries teaches other people. From endings come new life. And there were a lot of endings that you dealt with in the past few years. A lot of deep stuff with the Queen of Cups. A lot of secrets, a lot of feelings that are so scary and so raw that you probably chose to not talk about them, to ignore them, to push them down, push them away. And I understand that. 
But here, the Queen of Cups opens up. The Queen of Cups is always an invitation to open up. It feels like you're addressing something. You are embracing this newness by sharing part of your story. By Again, it's all connected to acceptance. How you are becoming a master at this radical acceptance on the road to your probably your biggest success yet. Yeah. Tell me more about this. Something cannot be contained anymore. The fire, the emotion, the water. It just wants to be shared. It just wants to be free. And we have Ten of Pentacles and Four of Wands. It's interesting that I mentioned Mars. And we have Venus here as your general energy. This is Mars and Venus working together. This is the 1111 card. When something is destined here, Ten of Pentacles, you broke the cycle. Aries, if you are listening to this reading, chances are you were the one, the first one in a long lineage who finally broke the cycle, the cycle of old beliefs. And again, you made space for radical acceptance. And I just, I, I don't want to just throw away radical acceptance like that because this is something I'm very passionate about. It's something I've been journaling, meditating on for years and years. And to me, radical acceptance, it's, it constantly evolves. And that's the thing with the Empress. She constantly learns and expand her knowledge around what she is and what she believes and what she represents. And radical acceptance right now, to me, is it's about accepting where we are how we are, how we look, how we sound, where we are exactly in our journey, regardless of where it is, regardless of our brains, our ego saying it's not good enough, we are stepping far away from what was expected of us. And that's what the Ten, the ten of Pentacles right now feels. You have been absorbing so much, so many old stories about yourself, about your parents, your past, who you're supposed to be, why you weren't good enough, why there were this and that. there was just so much of your story that wasn't yours. It's very literal what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a massive book and some of the pages are just burning away cleansing through fire and again you don't get enough credit for how intuitive you are Aries but you really are because again when you are the symbol of a newborn you're not in the ego there's this primal instinct there's the connection to the first initial feeling which I believe I always believed and knew in my heart that that was true intuition the first initial feeling is so hard to trust, but it's, it's intuition. And I think that you have that. You have this magic within you that is so primal and so real and so raw because it's not tainted by the ego. It is the primal fire. It is the spark of magic and beauty and everything in between. And it seems like now this Mars energy is intertwined with the Venus part of you, the feminine aspect of you, which is not about gender. Feminine energy is not about gender. I don't care what gender you identify as. It's none of my business. I'm talking about the energies here, how everything intertwined together makes the four of wands, which in the way I live the tarot is the most perfect, most aligned energy there is. This is the closest to perfection you can get with the tarot. It's a perfect moment of synchronicity that makes you believe in magic. It makes you see the magic within you and also outside of yourself. Again, it's the 11-11 card for a reason. You are protected. 
And also, you are the emperor in the tarot, number four. So all fours are connected to you in a way. Let's take another tarot deck. And I know I sound very passionate. Just, you know, thank you for understanding. Thank you for flowing and riding with me, Aries. It's not everyone's cup of tea, and it's totally fine. I just, I just want to take a second to really say how grateful I am to have you guys. And you guys heard me a million times say this. I have so many Aries friends in my life. Some of my closest, most precious friends are Aries. We have like this crew of friends that, you know, we've been together kind of forever. And so many of them are Aries. And I'm a Taurus, so I am this Venus part of, you know, the Mars and Venus working together. I really believe that uh, Taurus and Aries have this very special connection. And I feel that in this moment. And I just want to say thank you so much because you help me believe in magic. You teach me so much. Again, with this, this primal fire, this... This, I don't even know how to say it. It's a feeling that I have about Aries and I don't know how to put words into it. It feels warm around my heart space and there's this level of trust that I don't have with many people. I could literally hand the most precious things in my life to my Aries friends, my Aries folks, and... I would trust them with my life, really. And again, it's very hard to put words into that feeling. So thank you so much. Um, I know it sounds very cheesy, but the ones who know, know. And the ones who can appreciate the love, can receive the love. Um, I know you get it. Thank you so much. Okay, let's clarify. Let's clarify this blueprint. I want to know, what is the Four of Wands opening for Aries? Okay, Page of Wands. We have the Hermit at the bottom of the deck. So there's something in the present moment that already exists. There was already something initiated here. Um, Three of Cups, Ten of Pentacles. I haven't seen the Three of Cups in so long. It feels like a balm in this moment for me to see this card because this is this is my card. This is the card that represents my guides, my angels, the invisible family, my well ancestors, beloved dead. This is the card that connects me the most with the magic of tarot. So I love seeing it for the first time in I think a few weeks. <laughs> I really miss the Three of Cups to be honest. Um, this to me confirms that the Four of Wands is opening the door to new psychic abilities, new intuitive powers that maybe you did not know you had. And I feel like this 888 portal is going to bring that to a lot of folks. For a lot of people, this is what's going to happen on this portal. There are things that we cannot unsee. There is so much happening around the world and we are sensitive. We are affected by it. And a lot of folks are feeling lost. A lot of folks don't know what to do. And I keep repeating that. Don't underestimate you taking care of yourself because eventually when you'll be of service, you will be aligned. Mind, body, and soul. And with the Ten of Pentacles, I think there are more layers to... This, this connection to your ancestors, this connection to your lineage and how you are healing your lineage through your own healing. Again, think about 888 and the infinity loop. It's all connected. Healing your ancestors while you're healing yourself. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal because humans, we don't have a lot of control over the past over the future, we have control over the present, how we listen to ourselves, how we treat our vessels, what is the next step that we're about to take? You know, hermit, 
Where is our lantern guiding us? This next step today, after listening to this reading, what are you going to do? Are you going to check in with yourself? Are you going to make sure that your vessel gets what it needs, your body, your precious vessel? How are you going to receive a message that someone sends you? Don't underestimate a smile, a compliment, a little gesture, a little support that you can give to other folks, and also that support that you give to yourself. Again, it's helping you close doors that are ready to, bleak, to be closed. I'm seeing the Ten of Pentacles as this massive antique wooden door that is so heavy and so noisy, and it's like, finally, you can shut it. Finally, you can admire it for what it is. You can appreciate it for what it is and what it contains. But it can be closed. It can remain closed. It feels like there's the end of a specific timeline here. Yeah, the end of a specific timeline and the beginning of a new one. Okay. I'm going to have to write this down for a second. Um... Okay, I never do this, but I have to, I'm trying to be, you know, a good YouTuber and write down certain things. Because um, then when I'm trying to find a title for the reading that I'm so proud of, and I, I just want people to find the readings, I don't know what title <laughs> to write. Um, so, you know what I just shared about the wooden door? I feel like someone is going to come face to face with a very massive antique wooden door in the next few days. And you're going to think about what I said. Because it really is the symbol of this new timeline and this old timeline ending. What's on the other side of this door? Let's pick some cards. What's on the other side of those two massive doors, those two tens of pentacles? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, baby. Oh, okay. Now I'm excited. So, four of wands came up two times. I said, what's on the other side of the two massive door? We have the Hierophant and the four of wands, two of the luckiest, most powerful cards in the tarot. Hierophant, to me, is a card that comes and bless every reading. It's the key. It's the missing key. Always. It's when we realize that we are the key. And how weird that I'm talking about two doors and there's two freaking keys here showing up for you. Listen. The end of a timeline and the beginning of a new one. I just want to repeat this channeling because it seems very important here. The four of wands is a celebration. It's your... Past, present, future self celebrating you. Everything is aligned in this moment. I've said this before, but this to me reminds me of she reaches out to she reaches out to she. Which is the title of one of my favorite albums from my favorite singer. Um, and it could be he reaches out to he reaches out to he. It's this perfect alignment of your past, present and future self. And the Hierophant is connected to structure and beliefs that were in place way before you were born. All of the things that we have no control over, the rules that were created for us, you are stepping so far away from those rules. Again, you are completely disconnecting from the expectations of you. And I feel like sometimes it can be healthy, you know, let's say as a parent to have expectations from our kid, but really, is it? Is it? Why do we expect so much from other people? Why do we expect so much from ourselves? And how can we let go of the grip and surrender to, again, the present moment? This hermit energy that just wants to be appreciated that's what radical acceptance is i'm letting go i'm letting go of the fear the shame all of those feelings about my past self um 
it takes a while for it to dissolve, for those, for those blockages to finally be lifted. But this is what's happening now. It took a while. And there's, I don't know if you are going to relate to this, but I don't know why I'm thinking about that. I remember I have this huge box of old pictures from my childhood. And there was this period in my you know, early, early teens year where I was so ashamed. I was so ashamed of those pictures. I was like, oh my goodness, I hope my husband never see those pictures. I don't want anyone to see those pictures. What the hell? It looks so bad. And I remember hiding some of those pictures. I remember throwing some of them away when I was like in my early 20s. And today... I have some of those pictures left and I have so much compassion for this younger version of myself and I just want to hold her. I just want to apologize that I was ashamed of her because, you know, she was just a kiddo. And today I am excited to share those pictures with the world. I'm, I'm so proud to share this with my husband. And if I had kids, I would share the pictures with them. There's something here about that. And I hope you understand what I'm saying and sharing here. All the shame from the past. And we all experience shame in different ways. It's all dissolving, Aries. It really is. And that's how it's leading you to this empress energy. Hierophant is also ruled by Venus. It's when we let ourselves enjoy life a little. We understand that we are inherently worthy of pleasure, of good shit, you know, of the good stuff. And I think this is what's happening to you. Good things are finding you, Aries, because you're ready to accept them in your life. And it might sound very basic. Again, you know all of this. But to understand it, to experience it and feel it is on another level. And I think this is exactly what the 888 portal is doing for you. It's a profound, radical change. Let's see what the moon has to say. For anyone who is still watching, I'm sending the biggest hug your way. I adore you. I appreciate you. Thank you for being part of my soul family. Um, I know a lot of folks who are listening right now. I know y'all. There are some of you that I don't know, but I just want to say thank you so much for making me feel like I'm not alone because it's a gift that I cherish, people listening, people appreciating my work and the words that I share and those channelings. I'm a very rational person. If you knew me in real life, um, when I started YouTube, it was a shock for a lot of my friends and family because I'm, again, a very, very rational person. But this magical side of me, it really wants to take over. And I have to work on my own issues with shame and with um, old beliefs to have a clear channel and to trust that my words, my work will be appreciated by the people who are meant to find it. So again, I learn through every reading, but Aries reading have been feeling like, you know, really teachers for me in the past year. I just really appreciate you guys. Okay, your commitment is being tested be bold and make the first move. Your commitment to yourself. Your commitment to, again, all the learnings, all the teachings of acceptance that you learn on this road to success. You're really about to experience some type of success that you never knew possible. I think it's, it's on a different level. It's on a different frequency than what you expected or what you're used to. And you freaking deserve it, my friend. Stay committed to your growth. Stay committed to this alignment with your mind, body, soul. And you will go places that you never knew existed. And I'm just, I'm just here cheering you on and wishing you the best. Thank you for today's session, um, and I'll talk to you guys next week, Aries. Bye-bye.